G'day guys, Dean from Blog for the Blood God, and I'm here with another video talking about the new Chaos Space Marine Codex and some of the absolutely batshit insane combos that you can get using a combination of Warlord traits, Relics, Legion traits, and Stratagems from that Codex. Today we're talking about what I think has a legitimate claim to being the single most durable, hardest to kill unit in the entirety of 40k 9th edition, and that is Iron Warriors Terminators. So I'm just gonna be in this video breaking down that specific unit. I'm gonna be talking about all the different combos that you can use to dial that unit up to infinity. Now, in an actual list, you're not likely to want to use all of these because it gets to a point of ridiculousness where there's no point. You don't need these extra buffs because you've already hit that threshold of unkillable. But I'm gonna go through all of the different options available to you so that you can then make a decision in your lists on which of these elements you wanna incorporate and then I'm also gonna talk about some list ideas at the end of the video on how you can incorporate this unit in the things that are required to support that unit, plus the additional elements that you might want in an Iron Warriors list so that you can actually play the game, achieve secondaries and those sorts of things. So it's a little bit of an Iron Warriors review, but it's focused more specifically on the Terminators and how to make that unkillable unit. So without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's start by talking about the Terminator profile in general so that you can see the baseline and how regular this unit feels before you layer on all of the buffs. Alright, so they're a pretty standard unit. You take 10 of them. They're strength and toughness 4 with 3 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 9, 2 up save. Uh, their weapons are pretty basic. They'll hit you at strength 5 AP 3 with a single damage. They'll be making 4 attacks when they do so because there's one additional attack from the weapon. And then they have a variety of different war gear options. Uh, they have the Let the Galaxy Burn, Malicious Volley, and Warp Strike. So basically, the Let the Galaxy Burn, that gives them the uh, exploding sixes in the various phases and plus two shots on their flamers. The Malicious Volleys allows them to move and fire rapid fire at full distance as if they were stationary. And Warp Strike, that allows them to essentially set up on the table anywhere within nine inches, or not within nine inches of an enemy unit. And then Terminator Armor provides the models with a 5 plus invulnerable save. So, all in all, looks like a pretty standard unit, right? They're 2 up save Terminators, they're kind of tough, they got 3 wounds, that's pretty good. Uh, they got a 5 up invulnerable save, which you're about to find out doesn't matter at all. Um, you know, they've got, they've got a variety of different abilities, but here's what you can do. Here are the various war gear options that you can lay on top of them to really dial them up to infinity. The first one is that you make them Iron Warriors. Now, in the Codex, the Iron Warriors Legion trait is you get uh, ignores cover on all of your shooting attacks, and in addition, you get AP 1 and 2 is reduced by 1. However, on release, this was immediately FAQ'd with the balanced data slate to say that you cannot reroll wound rolls against units with this trait, which is really, really powerful because that means that things going in like Lightning Claws or Zephyrum or anything like that, that's you know, the Repentia, the fucking you know, things that are getting re-rolls from chapter traits and not like all of these things that are trying to re-roll their damage, they just get no benefit, which is really, really powerful. So you take this unit where you basically, you've got a two up save, your toughness four, and they can't re-roll to wound against you. And then what you do is you use the trophies of the long war stratagem to give them the black rune of damnation. Now this relic basically means that this unit, while the sergeant is still alive, has neg one to be wounded which pairs amazingly well with the neg, uh, with the uh, can't reroll wounds. So now a strength four gun is going to be wounding you on fives instead of fours, and they can't reroll their wounds. So those lightning claws go from re wounding you on fours with rerolls, which is like a 75%, down to a 33%, because now they're wounding you on fives and they can't reroll. So the swing there is huge. Uh, and this pairs obviously very well with other relics and stuff that we're going to talk about later, but this is definitely one that you want to remember and definitely one that I think you'll see in every CSM list, but you put it in an Iron Warriors list and it becomes truly insane. One of the other reasons that you're going to want to make these guys an Iron Warriors unit is because it unlocks the Dower Duty Stratagem, which basically on this unit, it's going to cost you two CP, but it decreases the damage of incoming attacks by one. So if somebody's about to hit you with a 
fuck ton of two damage shots. You can just be like, boop, I'm using two CP and halve that incoming damage. This is a very powerful stratagem. It is quite expensive and CP are quite limited, so it's not something that you're gonna wanna be spamming often, but it is something that can really dial that durability of this unit up to a thousand. And the last, but absolutely not least reason that you wanna make these guys Iron Warriors is because they have a Warlord trait called Bastion. This Warlord trait means that each time an enemy unit declares a charge against your unit, if it's not within engagement range of enemy units, it can set to hold to steady or set to defend, and that unit has the objective secured ability. So this basically means we're gonna create a situation where you've got an, a practically unkillable Terminator unit in the center of the table that has objective secured, which means you're gonna be holding the center objective and there's nothing your opponent can do about it. And you're also gonna be threatening all the other objectives on the table with obsec models. And there's again, nothing your opponent can do about it. So this is really powerful. And I think that this is something that all Iron Warriors players are gonna to wanna to be using. Now, if you really want to dial this unit up to absolutely insane levels of durability, you want to take two Dark Apostles in the list. Now, this might feel a bit excessive, and in most lists, I don't think you will do this, but just as an illustration of how powerful this unit can be if you really want it to be, here's what you can do if you take two Dark Apostles. The first one, you give the Illusory Supplication, and this is the one that you would take even if you were only taking one Apostle. This one's very, very powerful and very important for the way this unit functions. And here's what it does. Illusory Supplication is you pick a Legion core unit within six inches of the Priest, which would be your Terminators, and an unmodified hit roll of one, two, or three for that attack, irrespective of any abilities that the weapon or the model making the attack may have, that attack's hit roll cannot be re-rolled. So now you've got a unit that can't be hit on a 1, a 2, or a 3, and you can't re-roll to hit against it. And then also, it's neg 1 to wound, and you can't re-roll to wound against it. So all of a sudden, it's going to be very difficult to even hit the unit, let alone wound it. Very durable, very tough, and this goes off on a 2 plus as well, so it's a very reliable buff on this unit. The second prayer that you're going to want, and this is optional and it depends on how heavily you want to invest in this, one of the strategies that you can actually use to quite great effect with this unit is you basically you take your big 10-man unit and you put a ton of characters in the middle. So you take your three HQ slots and then you take like three Master of Executions and you put them all in there and your opponent's basically going to look at it and they're going to go, wow, six characters. That should be a relatively easy goal to achieve for Assassinate. But then what you do is you wrap all of those characters in this unkillable Terminator unit and now they just can't get to your characters and they're going to get zero for that secondary objective, which means that the objectives that you pick that you might only score 8 to 12 on are actually really good because you've been able to neuter one of theirs down to a zero. So that's a really powerful strategy and in that situation you might consider taking two Dark Apostles. However, I think for a more rounded list where you're going to be trying to, to more actively engage with your opponent, then you probably only want the one. However, if you take the second Dark Apostle, this is the prayer that you would give him. It's called Benediction of Darkness. And if this prayer is heard while a friendly Legion Corps, such as your Terminators, unit is wholly within six inches of the priest, each time an attack is made against that unit, it is treated as having the benefits of light cover against the attack. So you can see the synergy here. You've got a two up save and you're gonna get light cover even if you're in the middle of the open, right? You're out in the open, you're on the central objective, there's no cover to be seen, but you're gonna get light cover on your two-up save with Armor of Contempt. And basically what this means is that you will have a two-up save, goes to a one-up save effectively from Armor of Contempt, goes to a zero-up save from the light cover, which means anything that doesn't ignore cover, you're going to be receiving a save equal to their AP characteristic. So if it's an AP2, you'll get a two up save, AP3, you'll get a three up save, AP4, you'd get a four up save, and so on. So this is a very, very tough unit to crack because before you push them to their invulnerable save, you have to be AP5. So very, very durable. You're gonna be getting two up saves more often than you could imagine. And when you layer that with you can't hit them on a one, two, or a three, and you're neg one to wound against them, you can't reroll hits, you can't reroll wounds, and they're getting two up saves, it's like, holy fuck, what kills this unit? But that's not all. It's about to get even crazier than that. All right, to really dial this unit up to infinity and really make it just absolutely batshit insane, you wanna add a master of possessions to the list. And this master of possessions, so if you've taken your two Dark Apostles, you only have one HQ slot left, 
you make that your master of possessions and you give him the Liber Hereticus relic. And this relic means that in your psychic phase, the bearer can attempt to manifest one additional power and each time the bearer successfully manifests a power, add six inches to the range of that power's effects. If that power specifies multiple ranges, this rule only affects the range specified in that psychic power. So you take this and then you also need to make him Mark of Slanesh and we'll get to why that's important in a moment. All right, the first psychic power that you're gonna give him is from the Malefic Discipline and that is called Mutated Invigoration. Now basically this allows you to roll a dice and add certain characteristics. So here's how it works. Mutated Invigoration has a warp charge value of six. If manifested, select like one friendly Legion unit within 18 inches of the Psyker until your next psychic phase add either one to their strength or one to their toughness characteristics of models in that unit. If the psychic test is a 10 plus and you selected a demon kin or demon engine unit, which your terminators are not, you add one to both of these characteristics. So the idea here is you're gonna cast that on a six and if you use his ritual dagger, you can do D3 mortal wounds to the terminators and then get plus two to your cast. So you're very likely to get this off. And when you do, you add one toughness to the unit. So now it's a unit of terminators that are toughness five with neg one to wound which means any strength four weapons are wounding you on a six and they can't re-roll it. And any strength five weapons are wounding you on a four and they can't re-roll it. And anything between strength six and nine are wounding you on a four, which would previously have been wounding you on a three or even a two in the case of strength eight and strength nine. But because of the way you're combining the additional toughness and the neg one to wound, you're able to really push those breakpoints and make this unit really hard to hit and really hard to wound. But let's say your opponent goes absolutely crazy. Maybe they throw their entire army at you. They charge you with their entire Blood Angels army and they go absolutely crazy on you. And they actually do manage to kill a bunch. Well, this is why you've got the Master of Possessions because the second power that he takes is called Pact of Flesh. Pact of Flesh is a blessing, has a warp charge value of five. And once again, you can use your Ritual Dagger to get plus two to this cast. Each to, if it's manifested, it's like one friendly Legion Core, Legion Demonkin, or Legion character. So you've got Legion Core being your Terminators, unit within 18 inches. Select one model in that unit and it regains up to D3 lost wounds. And if you selected a Core unit, which is your, de your Terminator unit, and that unit is not at starting strength, one destroyed model is added back to the unit with its full wounds remaining. So basically, after your opponent goes and puts all of that investment, they're gonna kill a couple, but then you're gonna heal one and res another, which is so, so freaking powerful. And not only that, this also grants you quite a bit of movement because you can summon that re returned model closer to your enemy, which then means that in your movement phase or in your charge phase, you're quite, uh, you've are quite you closed the gap. You're a lot closer than you were otherwise. So this is a very powerful power to remember as well. And of course, like I said, we're making him Mark of Slanesh. And the reason we're doing that is because that unlocks the Delightful Agony's psychic power. And because we gave him the Liber Hereticus uh, relic, he's able to cast three powers. So you're going to be casting all three of these powers. You're going to go Mutated Invigoration to get plus one toughness. You're going to go Pact of Flesh to resurrect and heal models. And then you're also going to be putting Delightful Agonies on them. Delightful Agonies is a blessing with a warp charge value of six. If manifested, select like one friendly Legion Slanesh unit, which is your Terminators, until the start of your next phase, each time a model in that unit would lose a wound, roll a D6 on a five plus, that wound is not lost. So that more or less rounds out the, the way that this unit is going to function. It's going to be an absolutely hard, kill, hard to kill unit. You're never gonna kill it. And if you put all of these buffs on it, your opponent isn't even gonna bother. They're gonna look at it, and they're gonna be like, I'm not shooting it with anything that's not like strength fucking 12 with D3 plus three damage. Like anything short of that is just can't scratch it, right? And you need to be like AP four or five before you even consider it. So most people are gonna try to play around this unit. They're gonna try to actively not engage with it. However, that's very difficult to do when it's holding the center of the table and it's got all of these abilities for movement and things like that, which we'll discuss later in the video when we're talking about different list concepts. But basically the idea here is we're making a tough as absolute fuck unit that can't be touched. All right, so let's just do a real quick recap and a summary of all of those components. So 10 fully supported Iron Warriors Terminators have a unit defensive baseline of 30 wounds, toughness four with a two up armor. Their Legion trait means that you cannot reroll wounds against them. Their Relic means they are neg one to be wounded. Then through Psychic Powers, which requires one Master of Possessions with the Liber Hereticus, you have a five plus to shrug off wounds with Delightful Agonies. 
You have plus one toughness from mutated invigoration, and you can resurrect and heal models with Pact of Flesh. Then, with the Apostle Chance, which would require two Apostles to get this, you have one receiving the benefits of Light Cover, and the other means you cannot be hit on a 1, 2, or 3, and you cannot reroll hits against the unit. Then finally, you round this out with a stratagem for neg 1 damage from the Iron Warrior's stratagem selection. So yeah, basically this unit is fucking unkillable, so don't even try. If, you, if somebody runs this against you, you need to come up with a game plan on how you're going to outscore them, because you're not going to kill them. Alright, so I'm no mathematician, but I've done my best to come up with some examples of different things that could hit that unit to illustrate its durability. So here are some examples. First, imagine you've got 100 crisis suits, each one has two plasma rifles. That's going to be 200 shots, assuming that all are in range. You're going to hit 100 times because you're hitting on 4s with no rerolls, and you're going to wound 50 times because you're wounding on 4 plus with no rerolls. And that's because the plasma rifles are strength 8, but I'm neg 1 to wound, so that goes back, to, and I'm toughness 5, so that goes back to wounding on 4s, and because I'm Iron Warriors, you can't reroll wounds. Which means you're going to get a total of 12.4 unsaved wounds, because I have a 4 plus save against AP4. Then it's going to be 16.5 damage taken after the neg 1 damage and the 5 plus 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 from Delightful Agonies, which means that 100 Crisis Suits only kill five Terminators. So each Crisis Suit kills approximately 5% of a Terminator. All right, what if you've got 100 Space Marines with Bolters? You're gonna have 200 shots, assuming all are in rapid fire range. You're only gonna hit 100 times because you're hitting on fours with no rerolls. You're only gonna wound 16 and a half-ish times because you're wounding on a six plus and you get no rerolls. And then you're gonna do about 2.7 wounds because I get two plus saves against them because they're less than AP3. And then after my five plus feel no pain from Delightful Agonies, it's gonna be 1.82 damage taken. So you don't even kill a single Terminator with 100 Space Marines. All right, what about if you try to do the damage in combat? You've got a hundred Sanguinary Guard with their axes. So you're gonna get 400 attacks on the charge. Let's assume that all hundred can charge and fight, but maybe you're not in the Assault Doctrine this turn. You're going to hit them 200 times, hitting on a 4 plus with no rerolls. Then, of those 200 hits, you're only going to wound 133 times. Now, this is an interesting one because Blood Angels are going to get a plus 1 to their wound rolls, but I'm making them neg 1, so they go back to wounding on 3 plus. However, they get no rerolls. So, from that, I'm going to take 44.4 wounds because I have 3 up saves against your AP2 in combat because, again, that gets around the cover. So ultimately it's going to be 29 damage taken after I've applied the neg 1 damage strat and the 5 plus plus from Delightful Agnes. So 100 Sanguinary Guard going in, all of them hitting at the same time, are going to just kill 9 Terminators. So even that doesn't quite kill the unit. And then in my turn I'm going to start resing models, healing models, and it's just game over. All right, what about Xenos, another Xenos faction? Let's talk about Grotesques. So if you have 100 Grotesques with Monstrous Cleavers, you're getting 500 attacks. You're going to hit 250 times, because you're hitting on 4s with no rerolls. So regardless of your power from pain, you're still only hitting on a 4+. plus. You're going to wound 83.3 times, wounding on a 5+, plus with no rerolls. And I'm going to take 55.5 unsaved wounds, because against your AP2, again, in combat, I'm going to get 3 plus saves. That means I'm going to take 36 damage after the neg 1 damage and the 5 plus plus from Delightful Agonies is applied. So 100 Grotesques is going to kill 12 Terminators. Now, this is the first time we've seen something where if you take 100 of them, you can kill the Terminators. However, each Grotesque is only going to kill 0.12 of a Terminator. So take 10 Grotesques to kill a single Terminator. That's crazy. Alright, so for those of you who want to plug and play just that unit into your existing lists, here's how you would word it. Here's how you would write it into your list. Now, you can combine this with any elements that you want, and basically this is just your HQ slots and a single elite slot selected. So you take the Dark Apostle, he takes the Warlord trait for Bastion, the Prayer for Illusory, illusory Supplication, and he takes the Mark of Slanesh. Now, the reason that you want the Mark of Slanesh on that Apostle is because the specific prayer that the Mark of Slanesh grants to Apostles is Advance and Charge. So even though we've just been mainly talking about durability at this point, the ability to Advance and Charge those Terminators when you do want to spring out and kill something is very, very powerful. 
Then you take a second Dark Apostle and he takes the Prayer for Benediction of Darkness. Now this is the one that gives him the cover save, and this is the first one that you would drop if you decided that you didn't want to go balls to the walls crazy on defense, and you wanted a different HQ slot. Then finally you have the Master of Possessions, his relic is Liber Hereticus, and his powers are Mutated Invigoration, Pact of Flesh, and Delightful Agonies. Then in your Elite slot you take the 10 Terminators, for War Gear you just give him all Combi Bolters and Accursed Weapons, Obviously, if you wanted to dial up that aggressive output, you could, and that's how you would do it. You would change their war gear options. Uh, you give them Mark of Chaos for Mark of Slanesh. This means that they can receive the benefits of the Delightful Agonies, and you take the Black Rune of Damnation. So all up, this costs about 670 points and three command points. All right, so that's how you would plug and play it into a list if you wanted to use this unit. However, I've come up with a, a list idea for you guys that's very Iron Warriors, it's very on theme, and I think it's quite powerful as well. It's a little bit dialed back in defense because I think that it's a bit excessive trying to go, I need to de develop a uh, unit that can take 100 Sangard punching it in the face because nobody's running 100 Sangard. Most people are running like 24. So <laughs> no need to go that crazy with it. So I've dialed some of those defensive things back and used those points and command points to add a little bit more aggression, a little bit more board control and a little bit more damage and flexibility into the list. So here's my idea for an Iron Warriors list that I think is going to be truly dominating on the table. So your HQ is your Warlord, who is the Dark Apostle with the Warlord trait Bastion. His prayer is Illusory Supplication, which is they can't be hit on 1, 2, or 3, can't reroll hits. And he has the Mark of Slanesh, which means he has a second prayer for Advance and Charge when you want to. Then in this list, we take two Master of Possessions. So one of them takes Warp Marked, which is target an enemy unit and all demon kin and demon engines get plus one to wound against that target. And then Pact of Flesh, which is your resurrections and your healing models. And then your second one to, is the second Master of Possessions. He has the Mark of Slanesh, which means he gains Delightful Agonies. Now, because we've got two Master of Possessions, you don't need to take the Liber Hereticus. This guy just takes Mutated Invigorations, Pact of Flesh, and Delightful Agonies. So the goal here is one of them is going to cast Mark, Warp Marked and Pact of Flesh and the other is going to cast Mutated Invigoration and Delightful Agonies. And then we've got two with Pact of Flesh, just in case one of them happens to die, then you've still got that redundancy built into the list. You have access to that power for later in the game. Then you've got your 10 Chaos Terminators with your War Gear of Combi Bolters of Cursed Weapons, your Marcus Slanesh, and your Black Rune of Damnation. And then to flesh out the list, we've added in a Master of Executions with the Mark of Chaos Corn and the Relic Zal the Wrathful. Now he's basically got a six inch heroic intervention, so he's gonna sit in the middle of your Terminator unit and threaten anything that tries to come out. And on the turns that you do wanna send him out, he's quite powerful. In your troop slot, you have five, uh, three units of five Legionnaires and two Rhinos for dedicated transports. These guys are going to be able to spring out and add further objectives secured and also contest objectives and play the board and play the game that way. And then in heavy support, you have three units of three obliterators. Now, the idea here is that those obliterators drop down, you make something marked with the marked for whatever it's called, warp marked, and then all of those obliterators are getting reroll wounds against that target, which means you're able to put out massive amounts of damage with those obliterators. And also, you're able to put all three units of obliterators in deep strike or warp strike. You're able to put your marines in their rhino, hidden behind a wall somewhere, and present your opponent with only that Terminator unit as a valid target, which means that Terminator unit can walk out and your opponent can't just go, I'm just going to ignore that and kill all your Mauler Fiends, or I'm just going to ignore that and kill your Heldrake and your, your Forge Fiend, you know, like you're only presenting the Terminators as a valid visible target, which means your opponent has no choice but to waste their time trying to kill it. And while it's moving out, being objective secured and holding and threatening the middle of the board, you've then got each turn you're dropping in you know, your obliterators and you're shooting things and you're charging things and you're doing all of this crazy stuff, you're yeah. dropping them into cover so they're getting that, you know, Armor of Contempt two up saves across the board. This is a very fucking tough army, it's going to be really hard to kill. And when those obliterators are getting access to reroll wounds, they're actually doing some serious damage. So yeah, that rounds out the list, that rounds out my opinions of Iron Warriors. I know this has been a shorter video, I didn't go through all of the Iron Warriors Warlord traits and all of their relics and all of their stratagems like I did with the Emperor's Children. I wanted to sort of sh shorten the video, make it a little bit more palatable, a little bit more accessible, and just talk about the parts that are really powerful. So let me know in the comments below, there's a few things that I would love to know. One, do you think you can kill this unit? If you're a non-Chaos Space Marine player, or even if you are a Chaos Space Marine player, do you think you have the tools in your list to deal with this Iron Warriors unit.
That's a really important question. And what do you think effectively kills it? In my opinion, the only thing that kills it effectively is mortal wounds. But even then, they have a five up feel no pain from delightful agony. So it takes a lot of mortal wounds to actually chip through this unit. So you have to do like 40 in a phase in order to kill them. And note that if you don't kill them all, they're going to be resurrecting models and those sorts of things. So it's really powerful. But yeah, let me know what you think kills it effectively. Uh, and the other thing that I want to know is like this list review where I've gone through and I've, I've done a list, I've done a specific combo, but I've left out all of the stuff that I don't value. Let me know if that's something that you think is interesting or if you prefer the Emperor's Children style video where I went through everything and gave my thoughts and opinions on each Warlord trait and each relic and each stratagem. Let me know which format you prefer and I'll make sure that I do those going forward because I'm going to be planning to do one of these for each Legion and talk about the various things that I think about that Legion. So let me know whether you'd rather see me review the entire content from top to bottom or whether you'd rather see me pick and pull out the things that I think are worth discussing and then just discuss those. All right, with all that being said, thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this content, make sure you like and subscribe. That helps me understand what content is popular and what content I need to work on. And make sure you put some comments below. I love those conversations. I try to view this as a dialogue between you and me instead of just me talking to a camera. I wanna have an engagement with the community and I wanna to learn together and make sure that we're coming up with the best combos we possibly can. Let me know if you think there's anything that I missed out that you think is really cool with the Iron Warriors as well. Also, head over to our Patreon. You can sign up for as little as $1 a month, which is 25 cents a week, which is absolutely nothing. But enough people do that, and it really helps me out. It allows me to purchase better microphones, you know, better quality uh, cameras. It'll allow me to soundproof this door so that we don't have to deal with the construction that's happening across the street. All of those sorts of things I can't do on my own, and I need your support as the community. So head over to the Patreon and help out. Also, on the Patreon, you get a say in which legions I'm going to review next, what content I'm going to generate for the future. So it goes a long way to helping out and you get something out of it as well. Speaking of getting something out of it, check out the advertisement at the end of this video for my neoprene objective markers. That's a product that you can purchase for so something that you're going to get that you can take and use in games that also shows support for the channel. So make sure you head over to 3D6 Wargaming. I'll pop a link in the description and you can get the 3D the, you can get the neoprene objective markers there. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in. Do your objective markers ever get lost behind terrain or other models and become difficult to see? Do they ever get bumped and accidentally moved during a game? And do they ever spark arguments about distances? Well, not anymore. Introducing the blog for the blood god, not even remotely patented, neoprene objective markers. Made from the same material as astronaut suits, or maybe military equipment, or probably neither of those things, this two millimeter thick neoprene synthetic rubber is tear resistant, water resistant, and is designed to last. But that's not all, the blog for the blood god not even remotely patented neoprene objective markers come in a variety of different designs and styles to suit any faction represented in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. These objective markers are a perfect gift for yourself or a friend and are a perfect way to flex and show your opponent that not only are you a smarter, cooler and better 40k player than them, but you also have more disposable income than they do. For the low price of $25, you'll get not one, not two, but six neoprene objective markers, perfectly designed for 9th edition Warhammer 40k. But wait, there's more. For a limited time only, people who sign up on Patreon to support Blog for the Blood God as a Skull Champion tier $5 per month member will gain access to a custom design service where I will design a unique logo to support their gaming club like the one I did to the left here for the Potato Farmers local gaming club here in Melbourne. Follow the links in the description of this video to pick up your set today.